well. Aren't you little firecrackers? So, um, Edifier MR4s. Best $130 speaker you could buy. Uh, usually, just that, that's it. The thing about the Edifier MR4s is they are very small, uh, white or black, and they have like speaker wire connecting the two. And then the powered side is has balance input, which is nice. RCA input. Um, and then there was no remote control, and you got those like modes, and so it's a different. This is like a desktop computer speaker, and it's very good. But if you want one of, where's my pants? I don't know where my pants are. Hold on. What? No, nope, that's not it. Jesus, did I lose it? What a good intro! Don't fuck up the intro. There, I literally left it there. If you want one of these, a remote control and. A digital input. In fact, two digital inputs. Well, Swan got you covered. Swan and Edifier have very, 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 they're not, they don't like each other. So that's the best thing that could happen. Because that means when someone succeeds, the other person just goes and fucking just says, fuck it. And then D100s happen. I did the D300s. The, the order of operations was, let me think, it was Swan, uh, M200s, then M. 300 mark ones then i bought the m3a's and then swan finally got back in touch with me and we did the m300 mark twos which are here which are like some of the best speakers money can fucking buy then i did the big ones the m5a's and the m500s and those were too big and they're like no but at some point in the middle there was d1090s swan d1090s and then those were like the ones that didn't have covers or anything. And that's fucking great. Those were the last speaker that played in my old apartment. I kept them there. Those speakers, the Swan D1090s. Where are they, you ask? In my garage. Hooked up to my Alexa. Because they had Bluetooth. And I'm like, just play something. And it fills my whole garage. Then came the D300s. Which is the 6-inch version of this. In fact, it looks exactly like this. And if you go look up D300, in fact, it might even be related to this video be Swan D300. And it is a carbon copy, only this is 50% the size. Little tiny driver, little tiny motion treat. Oh, it's so cute. The buttons on the side, uh, big power switch here. We got bass, treble, volume, um, multiple inputs. You've got Bluetooth, coaxial, optical, auxiliary. Um, you get to switch between inputs with an input button, even though you have things, I don't know. You get to turn on, see this little LED bothering you? Boom. Now it's not there. That's some obsessive, I'm watching TV at night, don't have a little indicator light on indicate, that's obsessive. You got your mute button, volume down, volume up. You've got a permanent grill over this and over that. So they don't need to have a cover, like, you know, this is great if you've got little kids. Like my, my brother's got one on the way. And you know what? That little bastard's gonna just put his thumb right through his Emotiva tower. I could tell it's gonna happen. But if we had these, a little kid will break his fucking hand trying to get in there. It's going to be fantastic. Um, let's roll around the back. It, it's not that difficult. Uh, left and right. Uh, auxiliary inputs, coaxial input, opt, uh, optical input. Here is what connects to the other speaker. This is important because unlike the Edifier and a lot of speakers, actually, I, I can't really knock a lot of them because Triangle makes the Alaras and stuff that, that use this. They use just raw speaker wire. The problem with having just a raw speaker wire going from the left to the right is that means you're sending just power for the whole speaker. Where if you have something like this, something with four conductors, that means you're sending power for the tweeter and the mid-range, or I guess case the, the woofer, separately, which means you're doing digital processing here. Because when you send just two, you can't digitally pro I mean you can digitally process and send it there, but it still has to be separated by like a physical crossover. So you're not really taking full control. This is taking full control over what that's doing, that's doing, that's doing, and that's doing four different channels. And that lets you fuck with things, including um, volume shaping, which if you don't know what volume shaping is, it's a term I just made up. If you looked it up, probably doesn't happen. But what I would determine volume shaping is, and I'm sure they do this, is they know signal coming in is X volts, which means your, your signal level is nominal. You lower the speaker down real quiet. 
But they know that that speaker is not going to react properly at a low volume because it doesn't have enough uh. So what they do is they say, okay, volume here, this is all digital, we can control it all. Make the woofer have 3.75% more gain if the volume is this low. And then if the volume comes up, we can start leveling that out and making it more neutral. And then if you go really high, we could also bottom it out a little bit so that the speakers don't distort. If I turn the bass knob up all the way, these speakers will go, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's terrifying. Because these speakers are not little speakers. They're swans. On top of everything else, they're swans. I can play all the kill I kill I want. That is dumb. That is a dumb loud. I'm just speaking in your ear. And that's, I forget what, that's track one on kill I kill volume one. This is the first track. Skip. Right there. Too much. This is also pounding percussion. Um, I have the bass at 3 o'clock and the treble at 3 o'clock. I can make those vertical. There is a detent in these. I believe they're digital, no they're digital knobs. They're not just like actually tweaking like a potentiometer. You are telling the digital network inside, hey, less treble, and it does it. It processes that for you in fact if you turn it slow enough you can even hear the steps as you're doing it so if you turn it up all the way it's gonna be like eh. if you turn it down i replay that wait much more put together but i want more lows i want the low end of fuck with me ah. if you find that perfect balance because i had this on the m3 and mark twos these speakers sounded very good, very, very good, but they weren't the best speakers in the house. I'm talking, this is compared to the fucking $4,500 boot carts and the $7,000 boot carts, which are the best speakers in the house. And I guess the triangle has to come out and play. By the way, I bought these. These are the 40th anniversary. What is on there? Is that a spider web? Maybe I should sell these. Um, these things were great. But they weren't life-changing. Not until I turned the bass and treble knobs up all the way. Because on a normal speaker, bass and treble means bass and treble. I think we all understand that. The problem is when you're doing a DSP and you're digitally reloading a different profile every time you turn the notch, you could have it do anything you want. You could turn the bass knob up and it could just shut the treble off in the left speaker if it felt like it. If they fucking programmed it to do that. So turning the bass and treble up on those wasn't just bass and treble. It changed everything everything about them and then became the best speaker i have in the house as far as price to performance like this is seven thousand dollars that's four thousand dollars that's 900 bucks by by per pound the best speaker i have in the house so these have a very similar vein i'm turning the knob and the problem is that's a six inch with a mid-range and, and a tweeter and this is a little tiny fucking baby and i am attempting to fill this space not a huge room but there certainly isn't any walls. Those are just curtains, and then there's 40 feet to a wall, and then there's concrete, and there's all sorts of anime dolls here. What the fuck's going on? Point is, I'm trying to push these things to their absolute limit because I want you to be able to do that. Because the whole point of having a fiber optic and a remote control means you get your new TV, you get your new $4,000 big screen TV, but you're a cheap motherfucker. You always spend $200 on speakers. Let's buy a sound bar, honey. Don't you dare. Swans exist. D100s exist. That means your money is wasted on a soundbar. Just the fact that there's a wire that goes from here all the way over to here means you're going to get better separation than a soundbar. It's just as easy to hook up fiber optic in. It doesn't have the arc return channel that you do up and down. There's a couple speakers coming out with that. I, I just found out like the um, Abram techs have that. I'm like, you know what? That's fucking cool. It's not in everything yet. And it's not required as long as you want to pick up this remote and diddle around with the volume. Yes, it's called diddling. When you do this, it's called diddling. Um, this is uh, Epic Score. So I'd actually play this without fear. Oh, God, it's trying so hard. And you know what? It's fucking succeeding. What was that? Where did that bump bump just come from? Because it didn't come from that little thing. 
I'm so glad I have at least one. I'm just more volume, more volume. I want to say there was at least one or two instances where I was playing music in the background and I was like, shit, did I put the surround sound on? Have the subwoofer? What the fuck's going Because they're doing that thing. They're doing that thing. Uh, there is a port chuff. If you don't know what port chuff is, see the little hole here? I like being on this chair. This ball chair is awesome. This is only about the size of my thumb. And that's perfectly tuned to get low end out of this little tiny baby driver. It's so cute. But if you hammer it, like I'm currently hammering it, you're going to hear that. You're going to hear it. It's not It's not a Vanatu. It doesn't have a passive radio. That's, that's one of the benefits of having the boot carts is there's no hole. They're just another speaker. So that can't really go. It can only go. Which is much more expensive and harder to tune. I don't think they could have pulled it off for $200. If Swan started implementing passive radiators in their speakers... Um, we could just throw every other speaker just out right in the trash. Just walk outside and drop it. Don't even put it in. The, don't place it. Drop it because you need to break that shit. Now we're getting out of copyright free and into copyright fuck you music. So Do you know what that is? That's amazing. Where where those edifiers left off being like. A absolute gem to listen to. You had seventy dollars. You got a digital input, another digital input, and a remote control, and those take over. These are the upgrade, and they're swans. I finally—it's been a while since I've had a good swan review, because the M five A's were disappointing, and the M five hundreds were disappointing. And I'm going to get around to the M110s, and they're not disappointing, but they have very weird, like, requirements. These are just speakers. Little tiny motherfuckers, look at you. You're so, you don't even fit on my, on my stand, you're so small. And for $200, you can't not buy these for this exact reason. They've got Bluetooth. Oh, I need something for the office, honey. Oh, you need something that looks good in the office, honey? Buy these. I want to own the rights to the Amanchu soundtrack. By the way, um, Akiba made first episodes out. I didn't know what I was expecting, but apparently it's the same studio or writers that did Zombieland Saga, and it's fucking crazy. All right, just I I don't know if it's gonna be any good, but I'm giving it a recommendation and a fucking wallpaper. It's actually a screenshot. That gun's kind of jank drawn, but that was like one thousandth of a second as she was slaughtering other maids in the streets of Akihabara. It's a thing. Oh, see, we're 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 just we're just too much, and it's starting to. You could hear that port chuff. Oh, now it's perfect. I want them to I want them to be D three hundreds. They're not. They're D one hundreds. And you know what? That's fine with me. The wire that goes between them is relatively long. If you're gonna tuck it behind a TV, this is a 50 inch. So we're going down, down, directly across and up, and we've got at least eight inches per side. So you'll be able to fit them on almost anything. And I think you can actually buy this cable on Amazon. Uh, a longer one. I don't know what specifically called. It's not like a swan cable, it's a standard uh, audio interconnect. <laughs> Oh, Tower of God. It's another soundtrack that's great. <laughs> that like cake, cake, just it's clear as a fu You can make the driver smaller and maybe the driver struggles to get that low end, but that fucking tweeter doesn't give a shit what you're doing or what you're throwing at it. I, I had to turn it down. I had it turned all the way up and I was like, oh, Oh God, so much. And then I'm like, you know what? Just just give it like a one o'clock boost because distance will matter what you do with that. Um, I have to. I haven't sound demoed anything in a long time. I had one of my microphone stands break and it made me sad and depressed. And then I had to basically remove all my sound demos from part of YouTube. So I've been like out of the mood. I want to sound demo these so bad. 
so bad so that you could hear them because if you don't hear them you're not going to believe me because i'm just words the sound demo is at least a consistent thing with consistent microphones and consistent ser series of tracks like that uh this is craig david come alive the bonus track from the greatest showman and it's just like an ah uh, and it's happening somewhere else holographically somewhere else it's not coming out of that speaker or that speaker it's coming out of like somewhere so swan has finally got another hit of their hands i don't know why it took so long for me to get the d100s i did the d300s i don't think i ever touched the 200s did i touch the 200s did i touch the 200s i don't recall eh weird anyway d100s two hundred dollars now you would think the D200s would be $200 and the D300s would be $300 and the D100s would be $100, but they're not. So thank you Swan for sending these out. If you don't need a remote or digital input, you still got those. Uh, these on a desk, because people are gonna be like, well Zio, did you even try them on a desk? I tried them, here wait, I'll recreate it. By the way, marking up my floor with a magic marker um, has changed my life. If you are serious about audio, I highly recommend just fucking up a carpet, especially one with a nice grid pattern on it like this. This is a great carpet that came with the house. So let's assume here's your computer monitor here, whatever, 28 inch. Stumble through your things. Oh, actually, I would turn this down. Yeah, no, yeah, they work. These work. These, these work at a desk. I, I can tell you right now, just sitting right here. Fucking, I know the floor is not level, but. Oh. Oh. Oh my fucking God. Apparently this is a Paul Van Dyke, poor choice of words, Dark Knight remix. Was not expecting the pounding percussions. Oh my God, they are, did I turn that down? No, I didn't turn the bass down. I think I turned the treble up. Let me turn the bass down a little bit. These are great speakers. These are great $200 speakers. The only speaker I think that beats them is Mica RB42. And the problem with the Mica RB42, which are sitting here, which are also very small, ugh, which are also much like the best built speaker in the fucking world. Um, this is a passive speaker, which means it doesn't come with an amplifier. And the thing I've discovered having heard that on literally every amplifier for the last two years these are great full package 200 bucks those are 170 they sound best on a fucking 1600 dollars set of monoblocks using like pulse with modulation technology so i mean 50 50 either you're going to spend 1770 dollars or you're going to spend 200 bucks and get the second best speakers in the size range Oh my god. I, I'm I'm so, kind of tempted to put these up on my desk instead of the MTM iLouds, but... It's 2002, everything was totally new. <sighs> Alright, if I listen to Arcane, I'm going to cry like a baby, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to end this review. Uh, that wallpaper is from a show that you should go watch, and you can hit screenshot and get it, although I did put it in the screenshots folder slash wallpaper folder which you can get through with um that thing resilio sync which i reviewed on my second channel don't forget to look iams are now on their own dedicated channel in-ear fetish is the channel name and it should be linked in every video as of late uh, in a bunch of places on twitter and check out my link tree for all the other links so if you want to watch im reviews they're there i'm not going to break up my speaker reviews from the main channel because there frankly aren't enough speakers. How many speakers can I possibly do in a year? But I could do 250 IMs in a year. So yeah, no, these, check out In-Ear Fetish, check out the unboxing channel, uh, check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum, check out my Patreon and subscribe start, support this channel. If you wanna buy, so, uh, do I wanna, I'd probably sell the edifiers. Now that these are here, I always keep like one set around to compare. But now that those have been, uh, what's the word? They said it a lot in Game of Thrones. Not circumvented, not circumcised. When you like, you're surpassed and then replaced, that word. Someone knows it in the comments. 
They've been, these have done that, to, usurped. That's the word. These have usurped those. So now those can go in a yard sale, which for $5 a month, you get to see my reviews early, participate in yard sales to buy things like that, no matter where you live in the world, because I'll ship half shipping international, free shipping content in the United States and Canada. And then you listen to sound demos losslessly, and I might switch sound demos entirely off of YouTube so that I can play anything the fuck I want for as long as I want, because they won't be on YouTube, so it won't matter. And if you pay $5 to hear my sound demos, come to the party. DJ Zeos is in the house. See, like right there, Monogatari. Can't play that. Immediate worldwide block if I continue this song. If that one, two seconds was not enough to do it. Um, but yeah, no, sound demos, losslessly, possibly all the sound demos. And for $10 a month, you get a behind the scenes private Telegram chat where you could ask me questions directly. You could be like, hey, Zeos, here's a picture of my room. And here's a picture of my wife's ass. And um, here's a picture of my budget. What should I do? And I'm like, thank you for the budget. Cause I really need to know how much you have to spend. Cause so many people are like, Hey, I have to do this. I'm like, how much do you want to spend $200? You want to spend $2,000? Like what is our goal here? And so I'll help you out if you're in the $10 chat along with everyone else. And if you're in the $10 chat, you get into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell and trade gear. Usually gear that I've sold you that you hate trade it with other people who didn't buy that gear that I sold them that they love. They might love it. Anyway, I'm done. Trying to make these reviews shorter ain't working. I'm enjoying myself too much. I'm enjoying good fucking swans. Oh no. Oh no. I'm out. See you all tomorrow or the next day.